This video talks about acid-base disturbances. Now, I like to do acid-base disturbances from this particular graph. So let's defile it a little bit at a time. So what I'm doing is here I'm redrawing this graph. So on the x-axis we have the pH, on the y-axis we have the bicarbonate. And let's say that this is our normal. When the bicarbonate is 24 and the pH is 7.4, this is our absolute normal. Now what's interesting about this graph, or this interesting about this entire thing is that this is actually kind of three-dimensional rather than two-dimensional. Because here we have bicarb on the y-axis and on the x-axis we have 7.4, the pH, but we also have a third value in the middle of the graph, right, which is our carbon dioxide, PCO2, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide dissolved in the blood. And let's say for the green line it's going to be 40. So whether you're here or here or here or here or here, your PCO2 is 40. Okay? Now let's draw another line. If I draw a line here, and we're going to call that the PCO2 for this line is going to be 80. Now we realize that this has a carbon dioxide much higher than normal, right? So wherever you go on this line, whether it's here, 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 wherever, the PCO2 is going to be 80. And now let's go beyond this line, okay? Now this is going to be just the opposite as the blue line. Now PCO2 for this line, let's say, is 20, okay? So wherever you go on the line, the PCO2 is going to be 20. So far, so good, right? Now the graphs are starting to look like each other. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break this graph into four quadrants, and I'll tell you why later, not really now. I'm going to divide them into four equal quadrants, and we'll talk about that later. But let's see, let's talk about point A. So let's say there was a point, and this diagram is messy, so um, this is just for a reference. So let's say we talk about point A here. Let's say we talk about point B here. Okay, and let's say we talk about point C here. Okay. So what can you say about point A? What is true for point A? Sorry about that. So for point A, we see that the point A has a pH less than normal, right? pH is less than normal, and bicarb is higher than normal. So I can say that this is definitely acidotic. This is some sort of acidosis because the pH is less, but the bicarb is high. When does the bicarb becomes higher? When it's trying to compensate um, the, the respiratory acidosis, right? But has it been able to compensate the respiratory acidosis created by the increase, the little bit of bicarb increase, has it been able to uh, compensate for the increased bicarb? No. If it were able to compensate uh, the normal bicarb, then we would have the values on this line, on this particular line. This A would slowly move towards this red line, but it hasn't. So I can say that A is, you know, First of all, I can say respiratory acidosis, and I know it's respiratory acidosis because the bicarb is higher. And is it compensated or uncompensated? Well, this is going to be uncompensated, uncompensated respiratory acidosis. So that is our point A. Now let's talk about point B. Now point A and point B are kind of, you know, in a close relationship. Why? Let's compare our point A and point B. So this was our point A. Sorry. This was our point A, and this is our point B. Now what can we say about point B compared to point A? We can say that the pH is a little better right because the pH was here before and now it has gone here so pH is a little better but what about the bicarb and bicarb is much higher right bicarb is much higher so seems like point B is a later stage of point A because okay well the body realized that you know we need to compensate for the respiratory acidosis increase the bicarb this starts increasing, increasing, and they get to this point. Well, still uncompensated. 
and then they keep on increasing, 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 they get to this point. Still uncompensated, right? Because, oh, another way we know it's respiratory acidosis is because the carbon dioxide is 80. I forgot to mention that. So we can say that, yeah, B is better, B, point B is at a better situation than point A, but still this is not compensated. So we can say that B is also respiratory acidosis, okay? Point B is also respiratory acidosis, but this is going to be partially compensated respiratory acidosis. Partially compensated respiratory acidosis. So that's point B. Now, let's talk about point C now, okay? Let's talk about point C. So this is our point C. See, point C is in our, this line right which is the normal pH now we can see that at point C the pH is normal right the pH is normal and what about the bicarb yeah bicarb is high but the pH is normal so the job of bicarb is done at point C we were trying to raise it to a certain point yes maybe the carbon dioxide even in, it decreased a little bit but eventually you know the pH became normal. So we can say that from this point, of, from, from A to B to C, we can say that C is going to be fully compensated respiratory acidosis, looking from this, from here to here. From this point of view, is going to be fully compensated respiratory acidosis because it, the bicarb increase has eventually led to a normal pH. So now, now that we, you know, I took the liberty of erasing some of the messiness so we can talk about the other points. Now we are going to be talking about point D and E and C again. Now let's talk about point D. What is happening at point D? Now this is going to go a lot more faster because we understand the concept. So point D, we can see that pH is going to be high, right? pH is higher than normal. So this is going to be alkalosis. Okay, this is how I like to do it. I write it, down, so I like to write it down. So anyway, so that's point D. D is going to be alkalosis. Now we can see that the carbon dioxide is normal. So it can't be respiratory acidosis because there is really two options. So let's say I take it, right? Respiratory here and metabolic here. Okay. Both the options are here. Is it respiratory alkalosis or metabolic acid alkalosis? But we can see that the carbon dioxide is normal. So I'm ruling out respiratory alkalosis. So we're left with metabolic alkalosis. Yes, that makes sense because look at the bicarb. It's so high. So whenever we have metabolic alkalosis, how do we compensate? We compensate by breathing less, by increasing the carbon dioxide concentration in our body. So this point the carbon dioxide is normal so maybe the maybe that measurement the point at which this measurement was taken that was the point where respiratory compensation has not kicked in yet so this point would be uncompensated metabolic alkalosis okay uncompensated metabolic alkalosis that would be point d now let's talk about point e now at point e we can say that the pH is a little better. It is still alkalotic. It's higher than the normal pH, but it's better than what it was at D, right? So the pH is a little better. So if I write E here, I can write that this is still alkalosis because the pH is still um, a little bit alkalosis. So I, I'm going to write al alkalosis here. Okay, and but the, but the pH is a little bit better, okay? So pH is a little better than D, so I'm going to write here, it's partially compensated respiratory acidosis. And I, the reason I'm saying respiratory acidosis is because here the carbon dioxide is 40, but as soon as you move down this way, you're increasing your carbon dioxide. So your carbon dioxide concentration at this level is a little higher than at this level, right? So this would be our partially compensated respiratory acidosis. And it's partially compensated because the pH has not been 
normal yet. But let's talk about point C. Point C is when the pH is normal. Okay, so points at point C. So imagine that this is okay. I'm going to write point C over here. I'm running out of space. We can say that at point C, the pH is normal. Carbon dioxide is high. Okay, so that means pH is normal, but carbon dioxide is high. So it is going to be looking from this point of view. This is going to be compensated respiratory alkalosis okay. compensated respiratory alkalosis because here uh, the alkalosis is compensated because the pH is normal but the carbon dioxide is still high so now let's talk about F G and H starting with F what can we say about point F point F has lower pH right so F is going to be acidosis and the carbon dioxide is normal okay at F but what about bicarb bicarb is also low okay so pH it is acidotic, acidotic bicarb is low but carbon dioxide is normal so this is the point where where the where the Metabolic acidosis has not been compensated by um, increased respiration because its acidosis obviously because the pH is low and it's metabolic acidosis because look at the bicarb, bicarb is low, right? So this is definitely metabolic acidosis, but this is going to be normal then uh, sorry, this is going to be, uh, the, P, uh, the PCO2 is going to be, is normal, so we can say that this is uncompensated metabolic acidosis. That's our point F. What, what about point G? We can say that the point G is a little better than point F, that the pH is a little better, but it is, is it still normal? No, it's far from this line, so this is still going to be, so let's say, pretend that this is G. So this is still going to be acidosis, okay? It's still going to be metabolic acidosis, but this is going to be partially compensated metabolic acidosis. So now let's talk about points I, J, and H. So I'm going to go a little faster here. So at I, we can see that this is going to be alkalotic, okay? So L, oops. Sorry, sometimes I can't control myself. <laughs> alkalotic. Okay, so I is going to be alkalotic. And uh, because it's the pH is going to be higher. And carbon dioxide is low. So I'm going to write respiratory alkalosis. But is it compensated? No, because the pH has not reached normal values. So I'm going to write uncompensated respiratory alkalosis for point I. For point J, it's still uncompensated respiratory alkalosis, but it's actually it's a little better than I. So I'm going to write partially compensated respiratory alkalosis. Okay, that would be on my point J. When I'm talking about point H, that's completely compensated respiratory alkalosis. So now that we completed the entire graph, you know, this is something I kind of picked up for the ease of doing it fast for the exam. Something I, you know, it's obvious, but this is how I do it for a faster uh, problem solving. I realized that if I divide the whole thing into four quadrants, the first two quadrants is going to be acidosis, okay? Because it's the pH is normal, I am low, right? These are going to be acidosis, and these two are going to be alkalosis, okay? These two are going to be alkalosis. That's obvious. Now, the this one, the top one, just by doing a lot of questions and reviewing this, I realized that this is going to be my respiratory acidosis and this is going to be my respiratory alkalosis. 
this is going to be my metabolic acidosis and this is going to be my metabolic alkalosis so if you can